Hello everybody, it's Gilly Monster again, and uh, I figured I'd do this video, and uh, it was going to perhaps take a, a slightly different lean than I'm used to, or what I usually do actually. Uh, a while ago I made a how-to video on how to make a space plane, and uh, that was kind of uh, more a thing of fascination and challenge for me, and once I built it, it's like, you know, it, building it with traditional chemical rockets and engine, or traditional jet engines and chemical rockets can only get you so high so it's not really a practical design so I moved on to something else and uh, what I'm going to be covering here is actually how to build a proper vertical takeoff and landing aircraft and this is going to be kind of along the vein of the MV-22 Osprey and, and that it's actually going to be a tilt engine design instead of having uh, separate engines in the back for forward flight and then of course uh, engines that get shut off and take up you know whatever cargo weight so I'm going to do I'm going to try and build this thing uh, really kind of as small as possible and uh, keep in mind I don't use Ferrum Aerospace at least not yet but uh, the designs here I think would probably be effective enough to where if you had Ferrum Aerospace they would still fly. Okay. So first thing to do um, you really want to build the uh, the body of your aircraft first um, preferably without fuels and stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing perhaps a little bit longer tail of course you immediately see that the uh, center of mass shifts to the back so I'm going to go ahead and drain the fuel and I'm going to drain enough of the oxidizer to where the center of mass is roughly in line with this uh, with this cargo bay. Uh, if you're building a tilt engine, you want your main wings or whatever wings you have uh, your engines actually mounted on uh, to be equally spaced out around the aircraft. And right now, what I'm going is I'm using the vertical line on the uh, on the center of mass ball and lining it up uh, between kind of like right here. And right here, these two lines right here, it's re it really is just eyeballing it. Next thing you want to do is take another couple of fuel tanks. And this is mostly just because I like my uh, my engine pods having something. It almost like makes it more more sense to me. Because this is what a tilt engine would have to have in order to function properly. Um, go, and of course I'm using kind of like that, uh, that top rib right there lined up with the center line of the wings. But I, I like my, my engine pods having actually something tangible, almost like there would be some sort of machinery in here actually helping the, uh, helping the engines move. And for this particular, for building a tilt engine, uh, unless you want to build a really overcomplicated and convoluted design, um, using what I typically use as docking washers, and while they are ridiculously thin, and probably not necessary, maybe maybe they might be in the realm of possibility, I don't know. Alright, next thing, again, it's kind of, uh, it's more just me, like, thinking logically about, it's like, okay, this thing has jet engines, so I imagine those would be a certain size. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna give this thing a total of four engines, because I want this thing to have a little bit of, uh, speed going for it when I'm finally done building it. Go into the vertical view. case just because I think they're cool I'm gonna use the Panther after burning engines because I like having that added flexibility it's like I don't necessarily need that much power to get off the ground but I'm gonna go ahead and use it anyway I'm gonna take the gimbal limit and uh, just to keep this thing from oversteering drop it down to about half what it normally is and that'll help uh, help this thing get a little bit more ground clearance because uh, I was thinking about raising these up a little bit but I'm really just gonna give it kind of like long leg landing gear for uh, for actual like uh, flying purposes you want to engage the limits of both, uh, both docking washers here. Engage. I uh, always do the uh, the road the docking washer on the left. Drop it down to ninety. Yep, ninety degrees. Twenty degrees. So that way, this thing can actually angle its uh, engines backwards. So Next thing you want to look at is uh, actually the center of thrust and you can see right here that the center of thrust is right about where the center of mass is and it's easier to move the center of mass than it is to move the center of thrust so I'm just going to go ahead and line that back up and being that everything is already pretty much in both uh, a horizontal line and of course you look at this stuff it's in a perfect vertical line or near perfect vertical line uh, next thing you want to do of course is give this and thing yeah, I actually use these, uh, these kind of lines on the floor here kind of eyeball things into position well enough to where you know it's go it's it's going to work and of course all right 
Um, another thing you want for the control surfaces is uh, you want to make sure that they're decently big, but not too big. Uh, and for the most part, because all the control surfaces are going to be aft, or rather to the rear of the center of mass. I just lost my train of thought. Oopsie. Hate that. Train left the station and I wasn't on it. Come on. Oh. I think that'll be about good enough to get us off the ground for now. So, uh, oh. Actually, in this case, I use heavy landing here just because it's actually, like, it's, it's heavy duty enough to where it's not gonna break. And it can take, it can take kind of a beating. Uh, that's actually, I think, uh, the CAX mod. I'll try and put a list of all the mods that I use, um, in, uh, perhaps another video or maybe in the description for this particular video. Just, I tend to go with the tricycle landing gear instead of, uh, like a four. Unless I'm building, like, a really big VTOL. I'll make a, uh, I'll make it, uh, tricycle, and then to actually line up, because you want to be able to take off as level as possible, um, the, the best thing you can do, really, is, uh, put, actually drag your aircraft onto the, onto the floor, and then, like, basically make it so none of the wheels are clipping through, and then, uh, your aircraft will essentially be, oh, fuel tanks, uh, level. Derp -de -derp -de -derp. Um, the next stage, of course, is adding fuel tanks. Imagine that. We'll go ahead and take rocket fuselage just because it has a slot for the oxidizer that I can use. And immediately you'll see that everything kind of pops forward. Uh, and then I'm going to even out the fuel distribution in the back. So there's about 180 units in the front. And then there's about 181 units in the back. So it's good enough for uh, it's good enough for our purposes. And then add just a little bit of oxidizer as counterweight. One of the things that I do, just because it kind of helps add an, an element of uh, maneuverability, I'll go ahead and I'll add typically like canards up at the front. But uh, recently I've been trying to make it where it's more of a traditional style uh, thing. So what I'll do is I'll take the back. Oh wow! Oh, this thing actually, this thing actually might need canards. Okay, well then I'll make canards. Now it comes to actually slave everything to action groups for sake of simplicity. I always do it the same way. And typically under number one, I'll uh, hit the uh, move positive for the uh, for the docking washers or your rototrons or whatever it is you happen to be using. Number two will be uh, move minus, and because five is in the middle, I use that just kind of way to remember to move everything back to the center. Uh, number three is to activate the engines. Of course, everything automatically does the. Uh, <coughs> Everything already, already does symmetric, so it'll select all the other engines, so you don't need to worry about that. And then, typically, because I'll either use these or the uh, the Goliath turbofan engines or standard turbofan engines, I'll slave number four to switching the mode, which means it'll either uh, reverse the thrust at the turbofans or it'll engage the afterburners for the Panthers. Alrighty, that should be about good enough to get this and thing And really, off the, um, the biggest thing you want to remember when you're making a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is um it's all about where the center of balance sits relative to the distribution of your fuel and the distribution of your thrust so it really doesn't matter how you build your VTOL as long as your fuel is evenly distributed around the center of mass so that way as the fuel drains uh, the center of mass is not going to move oh i forgot to actually uh adjust these so i typically have the outer uh the outer elevons set up to be uh, my roll because that way it requires less of them to do it. And then the inner ones will typically be uh, pitch and or roll. Back ones will be both. And then of course the uh, the vertical stabilizers will only be uh, lined up for yaw. Alrighty, fantastic. Now I'm not going to engage throttle control avionics. That's more for building the larger, more complex aircraft. So uh, go ahead and engage the stabilizer, the uh, SAS and the RTA, R or RCS. And you notice in this thing, aside from the uh, the torque wheels that are in here, there are no actual torque wheels on this entire assembly. Fire everything up. See, at least right off the bat, it does pretty good at keeping balance. Now, obviously, you can see it's starting to tilt, but with the uh, with the extra maneuverability, it'll... not quite. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not the desire, the desired result. Now that you know this thing actually will take off, uh, the one thing I forgot to do was adjust the speed that the uh, rototrons operate at. And uh, the reason why you want them to go, I generally, generally set them at a speed of about 0.5 or 0.6. And the 
reason why is that as this thing transfers, as they rotate down, um, it'll allow the wings to kind of compromise, uh, the lift on the wings to compromise with the lift of the engines. So that way you're not providing all of this sudden lift and, you know, getting that kind of yeah. nose climb that I did. That's in the glory. Hell roll. Or, sorry, aileron roll. But I'm really bring this game for a landing. Uh, something else I actually forgot to do was add uh, air brakes. Believe it or not, those actually do help quite a bit. I'm going to throw all of that back here. Center everything. And I'm not going to bother trying to get a precise landing for this because, unfortunately, unless you are using a ridiculous number of, um, unless you're using like, uh, say, stationary lift engines. Uh, you can't really get as, at least a, as precise a landing uh, as you normally would be able to. So go ahead and take this back so that way I can start actually slowing down. Whee! Oh, so cool. I love watching these things coming for a landing. So cool. Even at like one third power, like this thing is way overpowered for basically what I'm asking it to do. But uh, all that will actually come in handy uh, when I decide to actually give it an armament. I don't want this thing to be too hard or too. Uh, too quick. And go ahead and come on. Come on. Nice and easy now. Get the gauge of the brakes. Boop. We'll just go ahead and throttle all the way down. Pump the brakes. And that wasn't a perfectly vertical landing, but essentially, um, with the assistance of say something like uh, throttle control avionics, uh, and then just a little bit of practice, you can actually get this down to a, a reasonable um, vertical like you can actually land this thing almost perfectly vertical it's tricky but you can do it go ahead and check the fuel 136 that fuel is 137 so perfect this thing should stay almost perfectly balanced of Hellfire Vessels, this thing still works. Alright, get everything actually rolling here. What I was trying to do is if you get them into a separate group and you actually have to keep an eye on which one you have because uh, at least when I do it I tend to go for J and L as the uh, the default group. Wait, which one? Which one? Which one is it? Okay, so it's the bottom one. So this one is J. Oh, no. J. No. J and L. And this one will be L and J. Okay. Just a little bit. Comes up like a dream. Nice and easy. There we go. That's a picture perfect takeoff. Almost. Alright, go ahead and throttle this puppy up. <sighs> so cool. You see it uh, slowing down just a little bit. Let's throttle down to below supersonic. Shut, the, shut that off. Triggers arm. Weapons modules. Clear ball. And, uh,. Boop. We'll go ahead and target the space plane hangar fuel tank. Send uh, two GPS. Oh, where is it? Lock target. Ah! I forgot how to do it. Oh, uh, boop. Two GPS. There we go. And you can see, for at least for a jet powered VTOL, it does take a little while to slow down. But part of that is also because I want this thing to maintain its altitude. Fire. There we go. You can see this thing uh, working to correct itself. Something else to do if you're uh, messing with your engines, you want them set to balanced thrust. Because that provides uh, the greatest degree of stability.
Boom! Just like so. Go ahead and turn the ripple on. Let's go down to 240 RPM. And where's the dish? We'll target the dish. The dish is always good. Nope, that's not allowed. Target the dish to the GPS. All right, target locked. And one more. There we go. Okay, now those should track. I forgot for uh, AGM 114s, you actually have to have them pointed towards the target so they can see the uh, so they can see what the FLIR ball is pointing at. One, two, three. Obviously, you can see how this thing is actually spinning to the right. And I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the uh, the key settings for the Infernal Robotics mod. And you can see right there, just a little bit, the uh, the engines. Uh, the right one tilted forward, the left one tilted back. So that way, now this thing is actually spinning. But of course, if you let it get too bad, it, this thing will will spin out of control and crash. Oh no! Okay. Well, thankfully we're not going so fast, so the crew should survive. airtime there but yeah that's what happens when you let a VTOL get away from you and uh, I think uh, whatever Kerbal I had in in my little container truck over there probably crapped himself <laughs> that is essentially how to build a, uh, a VTOL I know the last demonstration wasn't very uh, it did not inspire confidence but and it just becomes what you actually want it to do uh, and then of course uh, tinkering with it to uh, basically fine-tune it so I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe down below. Uh, hopefully anything I can do better. Yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Wow, that wasn't a Markiplier, is it?